Welcome back everyone. This is the State of the Nation. Now, last week on the 1st of this month, many private and state sector workers took to the streets to protest against what is seen as unbearable taxation on the income of the middle income class. Right now, the middle income class cannot bear the pressure that the current government has put upon them. Yes, the same government that said that they were standing for the people back in 2019. Now, the workers who came to protest aren't asking the government to do away with taxes. They are simply asking to bring those taxes to a manageable level after everything in this country has skyrocketed. But this government has no interest in listening to the cries of those people. Instead, they are more invested in getting the bailout money and the backing of the IMF that will allow them to borrow more money, which will enhance our nation's debt further. The IMF in its existence, despite having Ivy League uh, brainiacs working for them, cannot come up with a single solution that would allow the middle income class to grow, restore the economy and provide the breathing space for a nation's economy to expand. All those dollars they spend on their education only dictated them to find solutions that will, that will kill the middle class, wipe out the small and medium enterprise sector and contract the economy. And then those morons get it wrong, which they always do, who holds them accountable? Will this government hold the IMF accountable when our economy won't flourish as they say it would after implementing their policies? It certainly did. It didn't happen like the economy didn't uh, uh, flourish back in 2015 uh, to 2019. Will our judicial system hold the IMF accountable? Or will you and I hold the IMF accountable? Simple questions with no answers. And that is what's alarming. We are listening to a group of hoity-toity rich snobs in a country that's thousands and thousands of miles away and we are living our lives in misery. The current opposition says that they are against this taxation. It's a bit confusing because back in 2016 when they were in power, they implemented the same policies. People were going through misery. And at that time, they said, nothing doing. This is to fix the economy. But that didn't happen. Our economy's growth went down the drain. Ask Dr. Harsha De Silva how to take an economy from 5% of growth to 2.3% when they were in power via these very same policies of the IMF. Let's uh, understand what the current opposition thinks. I'm now joined by Municipal Councillor of the Samagi Janabalavegia, Attorney at Law, Lihini Fernando. Lihini, uh, really good to see you once again. Uh, thank you for being here. Uh, Lihini, your party was quite sure that the IMF is the way to go forward. You had pushed uh, for the solutions brought to us uh, by the IMF back then. So then, is it really fair for you or anyone in your party to protest these taxes or tariff hikes? First and foremost, Mahesh, uh, thank you for having me on the show. It's nice to be back after a long time. Uh, just answering your question, yes, uh, most certainly we always think that IMF is the way forward because what one must understand is presently Sri Lanka is a debt economy. We Our debt percentage is over, debt, debt, the total debt value is over the 30 trillion. So, and uh, we are presently a bankrupt country. So, first thing, first, uh, first thing that must happen to the country is we must stabilize the economy. And, and uh, to gain that, we need to go to the IMF. So IMF is a solution. But IMF has not imposed certain conditions on the country. All what they have said is, yes, the government must increase their revenue. The twin deficits of the country must be brought down. And also there needs to be certain uh, method and a certain plan in how the country is taken forward. That has, be, that has always been the request of the uh, IMF. But however, what one must understand is why people are getting on the roads to protest. Because uh, people are on the road because the uh, exorbitant tax uh, structures that has been imposed on the government which I think is not fair now, for example, we know the minimum threshold, the minimum tax threshold is 100,000, which is not fair for a citizen who is living a dignified life. Now, for example, if you take a teacher, a doctor, a nurse who has been living a dignified life, who has not been uh, begging and borrowing, who has not been going behind the government to meet their ends, now their lives are directly impacted because of these uh, tax structures, unreasonable tax structures that has been brought forward by the government. And that is the very reason why today you see uh, the 
white collar workers, the dignified people getting on the roads. They are people who have never requested or go behind anybody for the for their survival. And now if you see it's not just on the tax brackets, but we see exorbitant electricity costs that have been brought forward. So how do you expect uh, how do you expect a decent person earn, earning a decent amount to survive? So that is one of the primary reasons why uh, why people on the road. And I think SJB has repeatedly said that the minimum threshold has to be increased not 100,000 but it has to be brought either to 200 or 250,000 and we will continue to protest until the government uh, revises this minimum threshold and it also again to say you tell you, uh, you you need to tax from the people uh, who are actually earning and businesses who are actually earning exorbitantly and not from the day to day uh, people day to day to day survivors day to day people who are living a dignified life I mean uh isn't this what the current government also said back when they were uh, in the opposition back in 2019? <laughs> Anyhow, uh, now your party is uh, asking for power. Let's say that you are the current government. What would be the difference? Wouldn't you also go to the IMF and implement the same taxes and policies? What, my, what, uh, what I must say is uh, this particular crisis which we are facing, entirely the blame should be put on uh, Mr. Godabe Rajapaksa's wrong policy, wrong administration. We saw in 2019 how we, tech, how, how we brought, uh, how we reduced the taxes and how it caused a loss of about 600 billion. Then we went into uh, wrong fertilizer policies, all of that. So we are today, today the country is in this uh, crisis simply because of the mismanagement of Godabe Rajapaksa. And unfortunately, people in this country have to face the repercussions of living in such unfortunate situations. But SJB repeatedly has stole the government when it came when it come, came to corona when it came to the tax structures we repeatedly warned the government that we are going into crisis but then the government never listened so if an sjb government was actually in power uh, we would take the right relevant measures now i want to highlight th this document the blueprint 2.0 which was presented by the economic council of the sjb led by dr harsh de silva iran vikram ratna and kabir hashim we presented this economic blueprint uh, to the uh, to the general public and here we cl clearly highlight out of the debt trap and towards sustainable inclusive development and we urge people in this country to take this document and read in this we clearly state out certain uh, clear 10 points on how the country can be taken out of crisis now we know that there's a particular family in this country who robbed the wealth of the general public uh, th immediately there needs to be transparency and accountability that is brought in the star program the stolen asset recovery initiative must be implemented in connection with the World Bank to recover the money that has been taken by the people, robbed by the people. So to do that, uh, immediate legislature, legislation has to be brought in parliament. So this is what uh, the government of SJB will do if, if at all we were in government. So erasing corruption is of paramount importance. Then second step will be to stabilize the economy, going into incentivized growth, uh, ensuring equity. Uh, yeah, and so to, to stabilize the economy, we need to have debt crisis management in this country, monetary act and exchange fiscal policies, uh, revenue consolidation and ex expenditure co control. And thereafter, the government have, must have an in incentivized growth plan. The government, the, what we repeatedly saw is Mr. Anil Vikramasinghe coming and saying that, you know, we don't have a plan. The country must and country needs to have a plan to take the country out of the crisis. And also, the country needs a social security net. Because we know the poor in this country, the bottom level people has to be looked after. So the, de 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 the plan of SJB is clearly set out, uh, which outlines the 10-pointer, uh, which, uh, which an SJB government will implement. All right, uh, Lehini, uh, you can clearly see that the country is running a terrible balance of payment issue right now. Isn't uh, the idea that your party is proposing, which is to immediately hold elections, pretty counterproductive? See, uh, what one must understand, any leader must understand the sovereignty is vested with the people. People's sovereign right is in inalienable and inaccessible. And people's sovereign right must be respected by any leader. Having elections is the, is the right of the people. The president or the parliament must understand that they are just only temporary custodians of this country and elections must be held at the right time. And we know the local council elections are delayed by one year. And it is the right of the people to hold these elections. And no president can
can withhold the right of right, rights of the people and this argument that they are bringing forward saying we don't have money and it's just 10 billion which is actually if you consider the government revenue it's a negligible component it is it's, it is and not that the government has to allocate these monies if you really analyze how the previous money allocations in elections have taken place it's always they have been reimbursed later on so this whole argument of we don't have money is not something that that can be uh, stomached upon. Uh, so what one must understand is the elections must be held and all elections in this country must be held on time. So if the president is saying that he doesn't have money to have the local council election, does he say, say that he will not have the money to have the general election and the presidential election? So these are, these are very futile arguments. So the people's democratic right must be respected by any leader and no leader has a right to withhold the people's democratic right. And it is actually sad that people have to get on the road and to fight for this, this right of the people. And it is, I think, I must say the government is making a very grave mistake by saying that uh, they can't hold elections. It is simply, I want to say this very clearly, that it is to protect uh, the unpopular Rajapaksa regime who clearly knows that the, who does not have the acceptance of the people. It's just that they don't want to go in for an election and we see the president protecting them. The president is not there to protect the interest of one party. The pre president must be the custodian of all, pe all the people of this country and he must ensure that the elections of this country are held and the local council election, if not held, it will only lead to a further repercussion of people getting on the road and trying to win over their rights uh, in a wrongful manner. So we urge the president to respect the democratic right of the people. All right, uh, as always, candid as ever. Uh, thank you very much. That was uh, Municipal Councillor of the Samagi Jana Balavegia, uh, Attorney at Law, Lini Fernando. Now, we all know the empty headed liberals who were at the forefront of last year's unrest forced the then government to go to the IMF. But at that time, too, people like us spoke against it, and we were called bootlickers by those half fit income poops who are keeping very silent now that the policies of that organization they recommended are harming you and me and even them. Unfortunately, some feel as if they are reaping what they sow. We had an Aragale. And what was the what was the main apart from the hashtag go to go home? It was about go big, go to the IMF, right? The key key uh, stakeholders of the Aragale spokespersons talked about the IMF, go to the IMF, it was an IMF mantra and the others just shut up, they never said, no, no, we can't do that, right? So essentially they were fighting for the right to beg and now we have become beggars and now we are complaining about taxes. Didn't they know that the IMF conditionalities included these kinds of atrocious, uh, hor horrific uh, tax in increases? Why are they complaining about tax now? Because that is what the Aragale wanted. Not all, everyone in the Aragale, obviously, but the spokesperson, including the Bar Association. Every uh, group that submitted statements about this is what we should do in the future said, go to the IMF. Well, you wanted it. Now you got it. What are you complaining about? Well, that was uh, political analyst uh, Malinda Senivratna. Let's get the government's point of view. And for that, joining me now is uh, the Municipal Councillor of the Sri Lanka Police Chris Baltasar. Great to see you again, Chris. Now, as a Municipal Council representative, you should obviously be able to understand and hear about the people's pain. Now, given the atrocious measures taken by the government to raise revenue, uh, in such a context, are you all your entire party, the current government, as a party that claimed back in the days to stand for the people, are okay with these taxes? Um, good evening, Mahesh. It's nice to be on a show after some time again. Uh, well, first of all, let me tell you, Mahesh, uh, I think the current taxation structure is uh, something that we all cannot agree upon as much but uh, it's a crucial thing at this time where the country uh, needs it uh, and it's it's a minority uh, of people that's actually uh, claiming uh, who's, who's going to face the difficulties uh, see back in the day what we saw is my we saw the poor man also pay the rich man's uh, uh, benefits and his taxes so uh, now it's come to a balance uh, we see the unions going out and striking these days Mahesh. but uh, you know actually speaking uh, 
uh, of those people, how many of them uh, would actually have uh, these issues uh, with the taxes and none of them are taxed. But this is what parties are trying to do uh, to destabilize the country. They are coming out and, uh, you know, uh, scaling and uh, they're, they're, they're creating, creating uh, tamashas and issues. Uh, but let me tell you, my uh, as uh, for industries, uh, especially the export industries, uh, then you take the IT sector, where the IT sector, the, the skilled workers, from whether they be a pilot, uh, or where, the, where skilled labor is concerned, I think the government, uh, and tourism especially, uh, the government uh, should consider, because the tourism sector took a big hit uh, back in 2000 with, with, with the Easter bombings. And uh, now I think when they are raising their heads up, uh, they should be given those concessions. So uh, this is something that the IMF also has agreed with Sri Lanka. And the IMF uh, has recently, we saw a publication coming out where the IMF says that what the government, or the measures the government has done is correct. So I think it's a maybe a short-term thing and we'll all have to face it and we'll all have to go through it. Chris, uh, don't you think uh, if we sought alternatives other than the IMF, uh, such as going to friendly nations like China, the middle income class could have averted uh, these terrible conditions and overcome the financial issues by now? And um, there's also information uh, right now that says that China was okay to give us money to avert default but we didn't uh, resort to that. See, Mahesh, you would remember uh, back during the Mahindra Pad Rajapaksha, His Excellency's regime, uh, we saw how the opposition at the time, including the JVP, saying that Sri Lanka is going to become a Chinese colony. So that's how far that Sri Lanka has been supported by China. You know, do, from, from 2005 onwards, uh, the amount of infrastructure programs that they bought in the development and the facilitation during the pandemic, every single time China has come forward and supported us. Uh, so it was uh, not uh, China when, when uh, during uh, the, the previous government, when uh, Honorable Gotabe was in power, uh, we were trying to avoid going to the IMF, but it was the opposition who themselves uh, brought upon uh, going to the IMF and you know calling on the IMF uh, to step forward and uh, we saw in you know, on the opposition stages where we saw the opposition lead the current opposition leader say that if we if the government won't go that he will go to the IMF and today uh, with these tax tax issues and all that uh, we can see as to how uh, they are talking and how they are taking uh, making a big issue out of it uh, but uh, China and uh, not forgetting India as well when the country was in dire straits and the economy was in absolute dire straits uh, India and China both have been supportive and uh, we saw how the Prime Minister of uh, uh, China has uh, mentioned uh, as to how we are going to, uh, how, how they are going to gl globally restructure the, and support uh, countries in debt uh, to the IMF. So I, I believe that we'll have a, uh, we have had and we have a strong hold with uh, China. All right, uh, Chris, uh, this particular fact, the current elections, which is uh, directly impacting people like you, um, there is a conversation about an election. Do you believe right now is the time to have an election? Or are you in agreement with the president, whom uh, your party is backing right now, to say that the economy should be given center a stage on this matter? And on the other hand, are you not holding elections because you know your party will lose massively this time around? Mahesh, we are, we are a party that came with a mandate of 6.9 million uh, voters. Uh, we have two-thirds majority in parliament. Uh, at being a grassroots uh, politician, Mahesh, these few days with the elections being called previously and we were prepare, getting prepared, uh, we did uh, go down to the grassroots and we did uh, talk to the people. Uh, the only thing that we had back uh, since the 9th of May of last year, Mahesh, was the fear of going to, our, to being in our houses where we saw politicians being brutally murdered and houses being burnt uh, by a certain faction of uh, political representation. Uh, that was the only fear we had, but no fear in losing. Uh, and Mahesh, uh, to be very honest, that uh, you know, we have been, uh, I think the economy uh, has taken a toll. Uh, partly uh, there are certain factions who should be responsible for it. Uh, not forgetting uh, how the fuel crisis started, where those, the, the, during that time of the fuel crisis, uh, the minister in charge, where is he now? You know, industries without being developed, 
the people who are behind those industries, the, the ministries, uh, without uh, you know developing industries, they avoided it and they, they led way for imports to come in. Where are they now? Which party are they representing? So these are these are questions that should be asked. And I think the economy should be the key focus at the country. Uh, we see how the uh, you know how the dollar rate is uh, gradually dropping. How things are getting uh, coming becoming normal. So uh, you know uh, let's. Uh, I think we'll give it some time and then we are prepared for election. We were, in fact, the SLPP was the first to go and sign uh, the election nomination papers and to keep the deposit. So we are prepared. And uh, now in certain councils like ours and Colombo, uh, we have uh, joined with the UMP. So we are ready and we have uh, uh, no issue in running for election. All right, uh, we have to leave it at that. Thank you very much. That was the municipal councillor of the Sri Lanka Pudujana Permuna, Chris Baltasar. Let's take a short commercial break. This is the State of the Nation. Back in a moment.